You're watching WRKM Channel 22, number one in the region. Good evening. I'm Rafael Martinez and this will end in darkness. Yes, I am still wearing black on black. Bring me your complaints. I no longer care. Have I not done enough after 49 episodes? This being the 49th, have I not done enough? Have I not been entertaining? Have I not been a truth teller, a soothsayer, an analyzer, or an analyst? See, it didn't rhyme. But I've been those things. 49-ish hours of content with some point fives here and there, some clippies here and there. Have I not done enough to warrant wearing whatever I want when I broadcast? And we need a new table. Maybe we'll get a more solid table in the next studio. But you'll work with what you can work with. We are back in the studio. It is great to be back in old WRKM. Nice of them to let me into the office. You take one trip to Wisconsin, everyone thinks you might have COVID. Beautiful. Beautiful. But I am happy to be back. I missed this place. And I missed all of you. Even though, you know, you guys had me. I'm on the Instagrams. There's clips. I drop clips. But I did miss this time we get together. This weekly or at this point, kind of weekly, moment of optimistic nihilism that we call this one in darkness. Now, everyone knows, well, I don't think everyone. I think if you are someone who cares about sports in a mild way, or you've probably been bombarded by somebody who couldn't stop talking about it, we are in the midst of the MLB trade deadline. And a lot of trades are going back and forth. Big names. Big talent. Going to amazing organizations. My own New York Yankees. Got a few good pieces right before the trade deadline. We should have a good rest of the summer. Maybe we'll have a good fall. One can only hope. I'm going to go see them play, the, I believe, the Tampa Bay Rays soon. And the Tampa Bay Rays should be ashamed of themselves. They have a logo, like that TB. It might as well be a Walmart, to be honest with you. And it's also Tampa Bay. I don't hear much about Tampa Bay. There's a quarterback there, right? Mm. He's a famous one. But I feel like the rest of Tampa Bay is a bit more on the skittish side. One would call it a white trash haven 
That's what it was told to me. So I'm going based on information I heard. That's how history is formed. You know, a game of telephone. Someone tells you a thing, you pass it on. You do your part. And I am doing mine. Someone's been messing around in our studio. Something doesn't feel right about this studio, but I'm going to keep broadcasting. We are still in the midst of a sponsor boycott. No one will sponsor this show. So I have been paying for the hour of broadcasting myself. And that has led to some weeks not being able to do it. No one will put their product on this show. And I know why. I'm not, I'm not under any illusion as to why not. We tackle the tough subjects like the MLB trade deadline. But the MLB weren't the only people making some trades. GOP politics, or geopolitical politics, excuse me, wanted to get in on the action. Brittany Grenier has just been sentenced to nine and a half years for bringing in a, actually, from what I hear, less than a gram of cannabis oil into Russia when she was flying in. Unfortunate that she got caught. Unfortunate. I've never really heard of anyone getting caught for that in Russia, so it kind of makes you think. How convenient that the WNBA star gets tagged. She's been in the middle of this foreign policy fiasco. People with varying, you know, let's fix this table a little bit. There we go. Now I feel comfortable. I'm telling you, Bobby, some, someone's been in here. But she's been in the midst of this fiasco on the foreign policy stage. And, you know, it kind of sucks for her. Because I, I guarantee you when she went to Russia to make her supplement income because the WNBA doesn't pay all that well, or at least not in the way that the fellas get paid for a variety of reasons. We'll get to those. She had to go to Russia to play these basketball games to make the extra cash. So she could live like a baller. So she could live the dream of playing professional basketball while having lots and lots of money. Is that not the dream for all kids to become a sports icon? And to have the millions and millions of dollars to do what you please with your friends. The kind of money that you can pay to have things covered up about you. Have people change their testimony about certain events. The kind of greatness that absolves you from any kind of crime. The fondness in which people will think of you. Well, I know he murdered that person, but he did at one time run 300 yards. I know he got caught, you know, trafficking children, but he was a leading three-point scorer. Have we not ever dreamed of having that kind of power? And that's all Brittany Griner wants, is to make the income her talents are owed. Is that wrong? And maybe she wants the privilege. Maybe she wants the rich privilege to not be prosecuted for such a small crime. Small crime for us, big crime to Russia, apparently. Oddly puritanical. She just wanted to earn the privilege that she thought she would get by becoming a professional ball player. And what she learned is that's not hap- that doesn't happen when you're in the WNBA. Unfortunate. For months now, the United States and Russia have been negotiating this, figuring out, is there a trade that can be made here? Now, the thing is, if you're Joe Biden, if you're the government, it's hard to make this trade because in one respect, she broke the law. Now, while it might not be a huge law to us here in the States, 
but it's a huge law to them. So the question becomes, do you respect their laws when you go there? Or do you just pretend you're in America the entire time? I don't think foreign countries would appreciate that. Especially if you pretend to be our form of American. So, I'm kind of calling a bit of a crossroads of how I feel about the current trade that's on the table. The current trade that's on the table is that Brittany Grenier could be traded for a Russian arms deal. Let's pull up the name. Now, this other asset is Victor Bout. Now, Victor Bout is a Russian arms dealer. And that's very important because arms dealers sell guns illegally. And as we've learned, there's kind of a gun problem, at least in America. Not entirely sure about the rest of the world just yet. Australia seems to have it handled. We'll see how long that lasts. It's lasted so far. But I, if, if, if what's happening to the world is what I think is happening, I don't think it's going to. I think everyone will have to rethink a lot of things they thought about at the beginning of the century in the coming of these mid-2020s. But this man has the possibility of putting up some numbers. He's a bit of an athlete of his own. When you consider his vast network, uh, let's say associates, customers, clientele, because you got to understand, he's not just going to be selling guns again in Russia to fight Ukraine. When you're an arms dealer, you're everywhere. Every battlefield selling to both sides. We're talking South America, Africa. Wherever there is bloodshed to be had, an arms dealer will be there. And apparently he's one of the best. So you know he's going to put up some numbers. You know, all-time seller of AKs probably. You know, in a single season. Leading bullet seller. Oh, man. Bullet merchant. Merchant of death. I'm trying to make this not sound as harsh as it is, but it is harsh. Now, if I had to be conservative in my estimate of what he's capable of, and you think about, you know, how many guns he can sell and how many lives it could affect, I would say no less than 500,000 people could be affected by this. Because remember, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about multiple war zones here. Lots of death. Wherever there's a group that wants to kill another group, he will be there. Like the Ray Kroc of McDonald's. Coming from town to town to let you know, guess what's coming? Bullet shakes. I'm not that proud of that. But I will keep it in the episode. Bullet burgers. Semi-automatic shakes. Firearm fries. That went better than I originally thought it would. For me, I don't I don't think anyone laughed at it at home. But once again, Bobby, this is for us now. Since we're paying for the hour, this is now for us. And the young people of Bones who support. Thank you for putting those stickers up. I heard what was going down at the park. And thank you for vandalizing um, quite a bit of the park with This Will End in Darkness stickers, homemade stickers at that. So thank you, family of the Northern Bones. Thank you to our listeners in Germany, um, too, while we're at it. We have some German listeners, some English listeners. some Euro- A lot of European listeners have been coming around. Thank you. Um, we do want... Um, international exposure and i will literally join any country that offers me not only asylum but will sponsor this podcast so if you are from the great state of our great country of germany or the great country of switzerland if switzerland wants to sponsor this program we will take it 
we'll talk to North Korea. You know, he's a bit of a, a wild one. But then again, me and him are both me and Kim are both fans of Dennis, Dennis Rodman. Um, me more of his professional wrestling career, him more for the basketball. We'll take any sponsor. We'll take Russia as a sponsor. And some will say we're taking Russia's side here, but here's a problem. His 500K versus the average viewing audience of the WNBA, which is 205,000. The math ain't mathin'. And to be honest with you, this is not a good trade, so Brittany might have to stay. No, I'm not saying I want her to stay. I want to point that out. I'm just saying we need a more acceptable trade. And Brittany Grenier, for an arms dealer, ain't it. Because he's going to put up more numbers than her. And who needs that? Haven't women suffered enough? And here's the thing, like, I'm not 100% opposed, though, I think. I don't, I don't like the trade, but I, I could find a sliver of hope for it. Once again, we're an optimistic, nihilistic podcast here. We try to find the bright spots. What I will say is this. Whenever a white woman is in this situation, we risk a lot to get her back. We've given up quite a few wild ones to get white women back. A white woman goes missing. National tragedy. A white woman ends up jailed in a foreign country. Depending on how good she looks, she will get out. Other ones stay for other reasons. To be honest with you, it's mainly physical reasons. Let's be honest. Like, a pretty girl doesn't really stay in jail that long. Not saying Brittany Greener is not pretty, but let's just say to the average male, probably not. I'm not attractive to anyone. So, there we are. But, we may have to make this trade so we could show that her trade value matters. That her prisoner trade value matters. Because this is a moment where we can make a statement going, hey, we're going to get this black woman out of that country because America cares about its black women. Now, granted, the flip side 500,000 deaths is a lot. And that's just me guesstimating based on the network he had. So there will be great sacrifice in this choice. But if what is America, if not great sacrifice on the part of people who don't make the decisions? It made me wonder about my own trade value. I don't think I have much trade value. At the very most, you can get a pipe bomber for me. Maybe someone who was caught jaywalking. Being the host of the number one show on WRKM is not enough to get real good trade value. Now, I'm not under any falsehood that I should be. But as we spoke about last time, your assassination worth may not be what you think it is. Your prisoner trade worthiness or worth may not be good enough either. I've often told my family, don't pay the ransom. Just let me go because I'm not worth it. Um, Let's be honest. Like, you really going to give twenty five thousand for me? Come on. You know what you could do with that 25000 Probably not much because of inflation, so it doesn't even matter. I wonder what the going rate on kidnapping is right now. 
But I also wonder what is a Latina's value in this in this trade value situation. I think at the very least, um, if if this was a Mexican woman or a Puerto Rican woman or you know a South American woman, I, I think you can get like you're not gonna get a Pablo Escobar in an equal trade, but you can get a you know drug abuser or a low level you know, drug dealer. I don't know if Latinas have that cachet just yet. We also don't get kidnapped. I like how I'm considering stuff a Latina right now. Hey, gender is fluid. Um, sometimes, you know, we don't get, I've actually, all the time, we don't get caught in these things. I never really heard of, like, Latin people getting kidnapped. People always bring us back because we're annoying. So I don't. I think our trade value isn't high because of that. Now, a black man, you're you're not. Yeah, they're not giving up anything for him. That's just not going to happen. Puerto Rican man, pro- probably the same. White guy, he's good. They'll trade just about anything they can. Um, totally fine. Nothing bad will happen there. But I think, you know, while also assessing your assassination worth, you should also be assessing your worth as a prisoner. What do you know about our country? Um, What inside um, details do you have? Um, I would suggest to you um, study as much as you can. Um, Learn things you shouldn't know. Investigate, follow a congressman around, see what he's up to, take some pictures. I think everyone should have some kind of dirt on someone higher than them so they have a prisoner value. Now, if Brittany Grenier had had done that, oh, she would have been, it would have brought her back immediately. But she doesn't have leverage because the WNBA only averages 205,000 viewers. If they were, and people made the point, well, if she was LeBron, they'd get him back. Well, one, LeBron, wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened to LeBron. Um, he's too big of a commodity globally. Two, they're right, because if that did happen to happen to LeBron, they would have brought him back immediately. He's a cash cow. Now, people were asking, well, how come the WNBA players don't make that much? Well, let me ask you at home, do you watch the WNBA? You don't. Half of you can't even name five players on the WNBA in the entire league. I just know Lisa Leslie and Brittany Grenier. And there's that that other one. There's a white one. I, I, don't, I don't remember her name. But here's the thing. Women don't even watch the WNBA. So if anything, Brittany Grenier's plight is kind of a women's issue. And we need to push it that way. Why aren't women watching WNBA? If they did, Britney's cachet would have risen and the trade would have been made, baby. Does her own team value her at a high level? There's a difference between respecting someone and valuing someone. And I feel like women respect the WNBA, but they don't value the WNBA or women's sports in general. And I don't see why women aren't into sports. That confuses me. Maybe there's not enough drama in it. I don't know. But truly, you know, it's unfortunate that Britney's in this situation. I hope she comes back to America soon. Because she's got a book deal waiting for her. She's got a movie, a Netflix documentary series, or one movie documentary, but I can see them pulling out four episodes on that. Because you're going to want to not just talk about her, you want to talk about everything around her too. The climate, what it meant for America, and you know all the backdoor dealing and stuff like that, and her time. It, it could, you can get at least three parts out of that. A three-parter. Four-parter, you're pushing it, but it's only because people like... Having four kids of even number and that's programming, baby. But um, 
Yeah. I hope she comes back. I hope she's safe. But this trade is a rough one. And listen, someone's got to lose for someone to win. We all know that. Life's about trade-offs. And for the sake of equality, we should be able to risk about 500,000 lives. That's the way I see it. What greater thing to die for than equality? Now, these people won't know. But they're dying for this. They'll just know, oh, here's a villain with a gun. How committed are you or how committed are we to the issue of equality? We're going to find out. Good luck to everyone involved. Good luck to Victor. You know? Second chance at life. Maybe he doesn't sell the guns, but. But those people won't know. When they're shot, they won't. They'll just be lying, bleeding to death. Looking at Sky going, why? Why? And I hope someone goes up to him going, because we really needed to get Brittany Grenier out of Russia. That's why. Because. You know, women athlete prisoners matter. And we couldn't afford her to to be lost to the prison league because what if they pay her more? How's the ruble doing? Hmm, okay. Not great. Mm. Trade-offs, baby. Trade-offs. There's been a rash of trade-off related things happening throughout the world. Recently in Miami, they discovered that a lot of their sea turtles are mostly female. And it's because of global warming. Literally, if it gets too hot for the embryo and the egg they're in, they will automatically become female. And if it stays under a certain temperature, they will become male. So one could easily say these embryos are melting their dicks off in climate change. In sunny Miami. And of course, we don't think about the turtles. But the turtles are a huge thing for us. Ninja turtles are a big thing. They're very cute in animated movies. CGI ones made by Pixar. But they say the problem here is that there are very few of them make it to adulthood. So if it's all women. And to be honest, that's probably a fantasy for most women of the human species to get rid of men. And now nature is getting rid of male turtles. Maybe nature will get rid of men. Maybe we too will have our dicks melted off by global warming. And it will be a mostly female planet. And certainly will not have any issues whatsoever. It will be totally fine. Nothing bad will happen. Nothing possibly can bad will happen. Women are in charge. They really know how to team up with each other. They're really good teammates. Really good. I've never questioned the unity of women. Sure, they can be catty. They can be untrustworthy to one another. But to be honest, it comes to territory, doesn't it? it? Comes to territory. There are very few spots for women in this world so you know you gotta be a bit more cutthroat but will that happen to the male turtles I don't know will they become cutthroat or will they just stay cool and go hey man we had a good run turtles are cool except for snapping ones they will kill you that's what I learned recently
men are victims in some ways. We do have things that are specifically geared towards us. And it looks like our male turtle counterparts. Between males being killed by climate change, let's talk about how some males are being killed by really bad support systems. Um, so if you are from New York, you've heard this first story. Um, but if you're not, you've probably seen it on Instagram and Facebook. Not too long ago, there was a bodega owner who was attacked by another man after his girlfriend's EBT card declined, which... You should probably know what you have on that card if you're going to use it. They were buying snacks, and she was not too happy when the bodega owner told her, I can't give you this shit because your EBT card declined, so I can't give you that. Think, taking back my stuff now because I'm not going to give it to give it away to you for free. This is a business. She did not like that at all. She told her boyfriend to go handle that, and he attempted to. He went across, he went around the counter and attacked an old man, but this old man was, was holding and stabbed him to death. But now you're saying, but Ralph, this can't be justified. Oh, it can. He was attacking the old man. He put hands on him. The old man is about 60-something years old. This is a 21-year-old man. The likelihood of the old man dying, high. Young men don't know their strength. He don't know how weak this man is. And let's be honest. If he's willing to come around the counter, what else is he willing to do? So the bodega owner kills him. He was arrested and then finally let go after people went, hold on here. He wasn't asking for trouble. He was doing his job. The other guy was asking for trouble. And it's true. But you know who was asking for trouble? His girlfriend. Because had she not asked him to go confront the bodega owner, he'd still be alive. Simple open and shut case for me. If anything, she should be prosecuted because technically she aided in a murder. Or created the circumstances in which that murder occurred there's a bunch of stories going on like this most recent one there was a woman who had gotten cold fries from McDonald's called her son to come over and he shot the McDonald's owner in the neck and now he's looking at life in prison Over cold fries. And let's even be fair. Let's paint the picture here. She goes in. She gets the fries. Not to her liking. They're a bit chilled. She tells the person behind the counter. She alleges this. No one else has backed it up. That she was just given the same fries again. With a few warm fries on top of it. Then proceeds to argue with the workers there, and apparently they made jokes about her, saying she's doing a lot over some fries. And then she kind of proceeds to do a lot over some fries, telling her son how they're playing with her and shit like that, and she don't appreciate it. Her son says, I'm coming down the block. Now, she swears she didn't want him to go into the store, but mm, don't think so he goes in he yells at the people there's a lot of arguing a fight breaks out or allegedly the fight breaks out because they say the fight spilled out into the street but she alleges that the young man who served her the cold fries had a gun and was coming after her son and that is why he shot the other guy cops Magically can't find the gun of the McDonald's owner. Of the McDonald's worker. So it's a little weird. I wonder what gun she was talking about. But what we do know is 
her son shot a guy in the neck. And his reasoning, you know, you got to do what you got to do. He came after me. What happened, happened. Over cold fries? Okay. Okay. Now, you would think that people would take the side of the person who was shot because in all evidence, he was out there to shoot the fair one, no pun intended, with his hands, and he got shot over cold fries. But there are people saying, well, you know, he shouldn't have been playing with his moms that way. And that dude had to defend mom Dukes. Really? So that's where we're at. Cold fries are not to be shot in the neck for. Now, I've had cold fries before. Cold fries aren't fun for anybody. It could ruin a meal. It could really ruin a meal. They don't taste good. They're spongy at that point. I've had terrible service before. I went to Olive Garden. And there was a woman. Here's a ship of this Olive Garden. This Olive Garden doesn't take reservations. Which is odd. So you have to show up, ask for a table, and wait. So one of our party showed up. Asked for a table. We were literally seven minutes away. And she told, hey, listen, my, my party's coming. Can you just hold a table for us? Once they get here in seven minutes, we can be ready to go. The table lady or the greeter or whatever was very adamant about, well, you guys better be here in 10 minutes. Or I won't be able to hold the table. We got there in five and then waited for 10 minutes. Because I think deep down, that bitch didn't think we were going to make it. And when she was in a cunty mood, it seemed. Why rush us, but then not have our table ready? You wanted to exude your power on the situation? You wanted to show I am the table diva, and I own the tables. And you will have a table when I deem fit. I thought when you're at Olive Garden, you're family. But I guess her family's filled with cunts. And not to shame. Not to shame. But she was frighteningly, frighteningly, frighteningly. You know, let's not even call it frightening. Let's slow it. She was fucking ugly. Like, she was not a good looking human being. Which made me question, why would you make her the greeter? Ugly people have had a long history of just being bitter as fuck at everyone. And the truth is, the only people you should be upset with is your parents. They made you. You're their genetic fuck up, not ours. We're dealing with you. I also say this as not an attractive person, but I've accepted why I'm ugly. I've, accept, I've accepted what my face looks like this. Can't do anything about it. You gotta learn to live. You gotta learn to live with it. The way I have. You start a podcast and tell other people they're ugly. Now, did I want something bad to happen to this grotesque cow? Yes. I wanted someone to send her back to the farm she was at and so they could put her out the stud. She was a beastly human being and truly cunty, a demon, if you will. A true demon. And then was upset that we arrived on time. Like the, You can tell in her face, she was like, fuck, now I've got to work. A party of 10? However will I fucking breathe. And the truth of the fact is she's about 400 pounds. So I did wonder how the fuck would she breathe? 
She was her counter. But did I want someone to shoot her? No. Would I have been opposed to it? Probably not. Not saying someone should have. But she was a big game animal, so I understand why someone would have. I understand why someone would feel the need to or be confused as to what she is. That's mean. That's mean. But she would have made a great zoo attraction is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But no. I don't think she should have been shot for that. I don't think this person should have been shot for Colts for Eyes. Women have got to stop. Sending us into fights we didn't train for. Women love doing that. They love starting a situation having us clean it up. Because they know they're in no physical harm. You are. Now, maybe I'm generalizing. Just a tad. But I know quite a few women who have started situations that I've had to clean up physically. Where you now are engaged in an argument that has nothing to do with you. He didn't even bump you. He did a quick slip. You're both on the packed line to the bathroom. But now you feel disrespected for a slight, eh. So now I've got to come and deal with it. I don't know if he has a weapon. I more often than not let my girlfriends fight those fights. So that's you. Because I witnessed what happened and you got to deal with that now. Go ahead. Chit chat away. Have fun with that. Me and the guys usually laugh. We catch those eye like, wait a minute, am I right? Now, you'll say, well, Ralph, you've got to defend the person you're with. Not always. Not if they're in the wrong. Not if they're setting up a situation where danger occurs. Hmm. This guy shot this other guy in the neck because he was making jokes about his mom, apparently. But here's the problem with that. You've just now made your mom the biggest bozo in the world today. Because now everyone is saying, because she got upset with cold fries, you're going to jail for life. And now people are questioning her ability to raise her child, who apparently had 13 prior arrests and had been connected to a body from 2020 that he committed. And he confessed to that too when he was sitting there. So in essence... She took her son, who was a person of interest already, and said, well, I need defense here. These cold fries must be avenged. However, will I deal with eating cold fries? Which, a large fries at McDonald's is like, what, two-something? So, really? 216? 250? Really? You're going to fucking have an argument about 250 of fries you shouldn't be eating anyway because they're not good for you? Maybe those cold fries were a sign from God to stop eating them. Maybe it has nothing to do with the McDonald's entirely. Maybe this is a systematic way of the universe going, you need to stop eating these, these fried foods. Maybe they were doing you a favor. They were like, listen, we're thinking about other people's health, so we're trying to tank this McDonald's. So people will stop coming here and there'll be one less McDonald's in the neighborhood and there's a healthier world ahead of us. You got to look at all sides here. But one thing I have noticed is that a lot of dudes are getting shot for women. And to be honest with you, I would have been more impressed had that woman in the bodega situation had she gone around the corner. Because that's true equality. I don't need a man to handle my bullshit. I'm going to handle it myself. Now, this mom, she's a bit old, so I don't expect her to hop over the counter and have a fight with a guy at McDonald's. But I also would have hoped that she didn't have a son who was a killer.
You know, we always say how parents of school shooters should also be convicted. Is someone coming after the mom? They got the girlfriend who was holding the gun. It's an illegal firearm, too, so it's just adding up. I like how I do adding up as going down instead of going up with my hands because I'm a moron. But that's where we're at now. Men getting shot over cold fries, declined EBT cards, boyfriend and girlfriend spats. You know, this is inequality. This is oppression. Why are men left to fight the wars? Why must we engage in mortal combat? I would just love for one of these stories to turn into a woman, you know, took matters to her own hands and handled the business. Now she say she now she said she say she said she asked for the manager. And she told and they told her, oh well, he went home. And that's the sad part about it, because McDonald's managers are notoriously pussy. They are the softest people you'll ever meet. You can intimidate them into anything. They'd be the easiest hostage, really. Their hostage value is very low because they're just going to give you whatever you want anyway. So you don't even have to hold them for anything. They'll just tell you where everything is. That's unfair to them, but it's true. If he had been, if he had been there, could he have gotten her the warm fries? Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe her son doesn't shoot somebody in the neck. That seems like a reasonable solution. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe. Maybe this is how we got to handle things now. Maybe, maybe we've taken things to a level where we're too complacent. That everything now needs an extreme response. Why are we not doing more of that shit? If someone gets your order wrong at Arby's, chop their fucking leg off. You know what I mean? If someone pulls that shit at Burger King, put a cigarette in their eye. If someone at Wendy's is looking at you the wrong way, blow up their fucking car. It's a disrespect to you. If the internet's correct, and apparently they were acting shady, they deserved, or he deserved to get shot in the neck, apparently. And it's always fast food workers now. It's fast food workers and clerks that are being attacked now. In essence, if you look at the totem pole of economics, our lowest citizen, really. These people who work jobs that no one else wants. These people who are performing a service for their community by serving food. Are now being attacked by other people. Who feel probably rightfully wronged by society going awry. But we transfer that hate. And all that negativity onto our plebs. And as a fellow pleb, I, I often ask, what's the point? Shot a guy in the neck for cold fries. I doubt in prison that's going to be the flex. Dudes do time for real shit. You're doing time for cold fries. And you already had a body in 2020? What were you thinking? Not that I want him to get away with that last body. But if you're already a person of interest. And of course, you know, the mom takes no responsibility for any of it. But hey, that's all you, toots. That's all you. There's your fries. You know who will be eating cold fries? Him. In prison. When the heat's not working at Rikers. 
or they're closing Rikers down. So wherever hell hole they put him in, he'll be eating cold fries there. And he won't be in a position to shoot anyone. I hope this guy recovers, man. And I hope he goes back to work at that same fucking McDonald's. Bandaged up and everything. And you know what? I hope they put him on the fucking fries, dude. I do. I hope they put him on the fucking fries to send a message that we do not negotiate with terrorists. That we stand tall in this country. And you can try to knock us down. You can try to run around the counter and attack us. And you can try to bring your child down to the McDonald's and shoot us in the neck. But we're going to continue working in this beautiful system of capitalism, baby. And we're going to keep making money and going for the American dream. Because truly, we do live in a capitalist fantasy where cold fries can lead to someone getting shot. If anything, that is the ultimate first world privilege I can imagine. That you are so upset about cold fries and jokes that might have been made at your mom's expense. Who was doing a lot for some cold fries that you shot to do the neck. Now your life is over. And then you admitted to a second murder. So now your life is done done. I hope it was worth it. It's not. See, my mom would never put me in that situation. Ever. Because what's the point? It's just fries. It's one day. It's one moment. It's just fries. No one's thinking about those things anymore, it seems. How time is the... uh, How life is the moment. It's a bunch of... eh, How life is the bunch of moments. Even I get tongue-tied. Life is just a bunch of moments. And one moment, bam, done. He's out. You know, it, it, and it's sad to me that it's so many young dudes who, you know, maybe they had a chance at changing their life, you know? We'll never know now. The girlfriend's probably going to get a good amount of years. So her life's ruined too. I often wonder about those women when they think back of the people they date and how they end up in jail. Do they ever just go, man, I should have fucked this friend instead? It's a fair thought. They wouldn't be wrong for thinking it. They would not be wrong for thinking it. But who knows? You know? Who truly does know? Maybe the fries are worth more than we think. Maybe the fries represent the empty promise of late stage capitalism. And this young man was protesting hyper machine late stage capitalism. But I don't think that was it. I don't think he's a martyr either. And I don't think people should be asking for him to be freed. You know what? I got an idea. What if we trade this guy for Brittany Grenier? The numbers are far better. And maybe Russia trains him to be an ultra assassin or something. So he's not killing a bunch of people. Maybe like lower 20s, maybe 50. But... But it won't be as much as the average viewership of the WNBA, which is 205,000 people per game. 
So maybe that's the trade. We give up one of our own to get back the real star. And it's fast food and drugs, so they kind of go together anyway. Who knows? On this show, we're always looking for solutions. Will we find them? Who knows? We traverse the darkness looking for light. Looking for something to guide us somewhere. Those golden arches and the night sky used to mean so much on a late drunken night. Now I have to wonder... When I get cold fries, well, I have the rage in which to kill the person who served me my food. Is there something going on at the McDonald's that I'm not aware of? Is there something in me that demands my food to be handled the way I want it to be handled, exactly the way I handle it? And if it's not a perfect experience, I will wild out. Maybe the Olive Garden was my first step into a bigger rage. We'll see. We'll see. This is going to end dark. But hey, you know, maybe it's me becoming more of what I am. What a time to be alive. But I do support this this trade. And I think I will be submitting this to the United States government at some point. And maybe they're into it. You know, maybe I get an ambassadorship. They're like, that kid's got a point. He's his mind's on the ball. We'll give them both the boyfriend and the girlfriend, I think. Make the trade sweeter. Because Britney's a huge asset in this trade. So you got to give up more. So maybe we give up the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the girlfriend of the grocery store guy, and two draft picks. Like late first round. I think that's a fair trade. Because life, after all, is about trade-offs. And even if the, even with those trade-offs, I think we all know how this one is going to end. 